Welcome to Two Hypnotherapists Talking with me, Denise Billen Mejia in Delaware, USA. And me, Martin Ferber in Preston, UK. This weekly podcast is for anyone and everyone who would like to know more about the fascinating subject of hypnosis and the benefits it offers. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. I'm a retired medical doctor turned consulting hypnotist. We are two hypnotherapists talking. So let's get on with the episode. So <laughs> let's get on with the show indeed, Denise. And we've got a guest with us for this episode. We do. A, a person that I've spoken to a couple of times because I'm working my way through one of her, uh, I don't know, but courses. It's a course really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So this is my new friend, Celie, <laughs> who is an organizer. And if that sounds a bit odd to people, um, we think that that really is very adjacent to what we do. As hypnotists, we help people clean out the clutter in their heads and the, all the little voices that they don't need to listen to anymore. And so, Celie, welcome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. And Denise, I was thrilled when you and Martin invited me on this because I do think that there's a huge correlation between the clutter in our homes and the clutter in our minds. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the self-talk, that is that is enormous. Um, Martin, what were you saying before we came on about the kitchen drawer? Oh, yeah. I, whenever I um, speak with people and they're experiencing procrastination, I will suggest that they clean their kitchen, knowing full well that they don't want to. Right. And I'll say, if you can't <laughs> clean the kitchen, get that drawer, the one that you always throw the clutter in, the one that you keep adding to, get that, tip it upside down, empty the contents out, give the drawer a good clean, put everything back in there that you need and everything you don't throw it away. And then you'll feel so much better. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like a 10 or 15 minute exercise, right? People always ex expand in their mind. Well, I find that they either expand or contract. They uh, mostly people think that just getting, you know, organized is going to take so much longer. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, how long do you think it's going to take you to do that junk drawer? And they're like, Oh, an hour. And I'm like, okay, set the timer. And then hmm. 12 minutes later, it's done, That's done. right? But, but how much time have they wasted thinking about it? Yes. about it. And I do think that sometimes, you know, like the self-talk, like now it's no longer the junk drawer. Now it's the utility drawer. Mm -hmm. right? So the, you are you putting things in there that you need, batteries, you know, flashlight, uh, pens, pencils, what, but it's utility and kind of just reframing it. The, what you're calling it sometimes makes a yes, big yes. difference. So very so, definitely what we do. Yeah. Reframing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Right. How you reframe things makes a world of difference. How you think about it, even yeah. changing it from a negative word, like junk to a positive right. word. Like mm -hmm. utility, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those are things I'm using. It's not junk. It's things I'm using. Don't put anything in there that you're not. So active. don't put the spent batteries. Don't put in the <laughs> pens from the bank that don't work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So this is what I love. So have you worked with, specifically, have you worked with people who have disorganization as a, as a, as a impediment? And have you used hypnotism to help them? Yes, but not in the way, not as, as detailed as the stuff you do. Mm -hmm. you, you, I, I feel like, Celia, can you come to my house and fix it? <laughs> right, which I right. did for 20 years. I went into people's homes and put on my knee pads and actually worked with them, sometimes without them. Some people are just like magic wand, just do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'd go in and do it. Um, and I loved it. It was absolutely fabulous. I was, uh, I started my business in 2003. I became a certified professional organizer in 2008. There's only 400 of us worldwide. And it really, truly was my life's passion. Then of course we had the pandemic, pandem pandemic and <laughs> it changed. And I literally yeah. legally couldn't go into people's homes, right? We were not yeah. allowed. And so that was when I, you know, did a little pivot as they say, and thought to myself, I'm getting a bit older and I want to do things that can change more than the people I can drive or fly to, right? Mm -hmm. And that's when I developed my course, which I know you're working through. And it's so much fun because I'm not doing the work. 
my students are doing the work. I'm facilitating. Which is, of course, change. where it has to happen. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. And you're facilitating changes as well. But mm -hmm. it's they're actually making those big changes on their own. And that is, I feel, so much more powerful and long lasting. Do you feel the same about the yes, work yes. that you do with people? Yeah. Yes. Actually, there were a couple of things that occurred to me as you were talking there. Um, one is uh, the people I've helped. It's probably hoarders. I mean, not loads of them, but a couple of people who, and it's usually because they hoard certain kinds of things because of certain things that happened in their past. Um, but also it isn't, it's one of both of us work with, let's fix this little thing. And then mm -hmm. it makes it easier to fix this little thing. If you go in and just look, you have an organized house. It won't stay that way unless you're the one that's done the work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I find that that is so true. So this is interesting. So like um, when you talk about working with people with hoarding disorder, so mm -hmm. often uh, there will be a huge loss in the past, the death of a child, uh, mm -hmm. a broken heart, right? And so, and so what they're doing is holding on to things that they can control because yeah. they can't yeah. control other people departing or emotions. Um, That's a lot of so, so with your hypnotism, how do you, I, I'm just fascinated to know a little bit more about how it works. Well, you'll have to invite us to your podcast and we'll talk about hypnotism. I, 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 don't, have a podcast. I don't have a podcast, but I just. I oh, just we'll work on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's absolutely fascinating because I agree those types of um, like making a small change. Mm -hmm. uh, recently in, in our group, we did this thing called the 10 minute triumph. So just every day, just making 10-minute incremental change, right? And then people realize at the end of a, a month, that's 30, 300 hours or 300 minutes. That's, uh, you know, five a hours. Yeah. Yeah. It adds but, and that's it. It's not scary if it's 10 minutes. Anybody can, you can do anything for 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, no, I think I, I love that. I, I want to hear more from you about the correlation, though. I'm just so curious. Well, the, the similarities are, are uncanny, Celie, because what you're talking about there, small increments, this, that, and the other, the kind of therapy I do, it's small steps all the way. It's, you know, one more thing. The, the, the main thing that's standing out to me immediately is the difference in the part of the journey that the client's on in between whether they would contact yourself or myself, because with yourself, your clients, I'm guessing, approach you because it's, I want you to help me organize my house, my life, whatever. Mm -hmm. With me, clients will contact me for whatever issue, say procrastination, and that will mm -hmm. lead to a similar conversation about organization. Um, so they're in a different part of the journey, I would suggest. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the correlation there is unbelievable. It's the same thing in terms of encouraging and empowering people to tidy their mind or tidy their house. What do you think, Denise? I agree. I agree. <laughs> I, I think that um, neither, neither Martin nor I am terribly keen on, you need to know what the core, the basic cause is, but you don't need people to relive the trauma right. while they're doing it. Um, but, but we do need to have some idea of what the direction is. So you'd need to know if somebody is hoarding, because they're following what their mom did, who was following what her mother did, because she came out of the depression. Right. <laughs> Therefore, you hang on to everything. It might be useful. Yeah. Or some other reason that there was a lot of poverty. Or if it's because of a loss. And you need to know that so you don't make them feel worse while you're talking about it. You know? But I, I, I'm fascinated. I wonder how many people, how many uh, people are you still working with? that you, you started working with, say, the paper cleanse, and and then they they stayed on. How many people do you oh, think working with? Oh, great you? question. So um, yeah, so right now I would say uh, over half of the people who did my paper cleanse course have stayed on in mm -hmm. my membership, the Clarity Connection, because then once they kind of get the paper sorted, then they realize the paper is the hardest thing to do. By the way, of all of the types of organizing projects, paper is. You've got to read it in order exactly. to know what it is. You, you really have to look at every single piece of paper. So once people tackle that, then this kind of confidence, they are so empowered. They're like, oh, 
I can do my bookshelf. Yeah. I can do, I can do my kitchen. That's, you know, yes. I think that so, is, yeah. hypnotism can give you clarity, yes. which is really what we want for people. It yes. isn't, we don't want them to relive the trauma. We want them no. to know which bits of the trauma they need to hang on to for, for a better life and which bits they can let go. The pain, the, the, the emotion that it contains can, can go. And, and so, so I'm curious, um, like, and I always ask people, what's your why? Why is it now yeah. that, you know, that you've decided to invest in my course, to hire um, Martin or Denise? Why are you doing it? And it's so interesting because I have had people uh, just recently, uh, I had somebody call me up and they're like, so I have this article about, you know, when you were doing toys in the Washington Post. Like, I think that was 2008, right? And, and <laughs> I, you know, and I called myself the toy tamer because I worked with a lot of young families. I'm like, I won't touch a toy now, you know, for love or money. Um, and, <laughs> but they literally had that piece of paper for 15 years thinking, you know, it's kind of that, you know, free contemplation, contemplation, mm -hmm. that kind of decision-making model where they finally realized and so I'm finding a lot of people that come to, that are coming to me now have been left with a mess from a deceased parent, and they don't want to do that to their adult children. Yeah, right? that's Swedish death cleaning. No? Yeah, yeah. Oh, me. <laughs> that's me at the moment. <laughs> yeah, and and Mar that, Martin yeah. is uh, is the executor for a friend's will, and so uh, he has had to deal with probate and all those wonderful things. Uh, um, and and that person wasn't that disorganized, I don't think. When you no, no, not at all. Many people, but it's still a lot to go through. Now I'm I'm thinking about I, I've lost my both oh, my parents mom. over the last ten mm. years, mm -hmm. and right in this room where I'm sitting at the moment, on the opposite side, is a big pile of stuff, all very neat and tidy from my dad's house, and it's all the little things, all the little memories that I don't want to let go of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So silly. And... Give him a quick suggestion. <laughs> right. So so um. One of the, my biggest suggestions is time. And we, mm. we literally just talked about this with my group recently. Um, somebody had mentioned that her, I think her father had passed away in September. Mm. And we were all kind of like, it's too soon. It's mm -hmm. too soon mm. to make those decisions. And the example I gave, in fact, today is the anniversary of my mother's death, which makes me smile because it's Pi Day. <laughs> and I literally think my mom was holding on till pie day because she loved a slice of pie. And, and, <laughs> and it just, it makes me smile every time. But I, I brought her things home and it took me five years. I had a suitcase because we had to clear out her um, assisted living place very quickly. So I just packed her clothes in one suitcase and I had a quilt made for myself and my two sisters, which was a wonderful thing because my mother wore the same clothes for 40 years. She didn't change size and she was a practical woman. She was born in 1917, <laughs> depression, World War II. She, those clothes were nearly threadbare, but you know, every single garment in my quilt was like, oh, that was the dress she wore to my wedding. That was what she wore to the first Broadway show we took our daughter to. Um, you know, every, gar those were her pajamas. I, mm -hmm. it, and just last week when I wasn't feeling well, I took that quilt and laid it over me. And it was like my mom giving me a hug. Oh. So I did that with the clothes and then the rest of the memorabilia, like I just threw things in a suitcase. I didn't open that suitcase until 2020 during the pandemic. It sat there for four years and then I was ready and mm. I was able to very quickly say, yeah, these are things like she had saved every letter I sent her. And of course, now I'm curious, what did I write to her? We lived in England, right? So, mm -hmm. and it was when, um, when we lived in England in the 90s, my mom would call on the last Sunday of the month for 30 minutes, because it cost a dollar a minute long distance. I, know. I, went, I, I was the reverse. I came here, they were exactly, there. Exactly, exactly. And I would pick up the phone and I would talk for 25 minutes. And then in the last five minutes, she would be like, oh yeah, Aunt Josie, had shingles, you know, she'd fill me in mm -hmm. on her life and then we'd hang up. So we wrote letters back and forth. And I, I still plan on looking through those letters because that is the archive of my life, right? The museum of me are in those letters that I wrote to my mom. Um, so 
so for you, Martin, if mm. enough time has passed, you might not find it quite so overwhelming. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting to that point now because yeah. it's sort of five years. Yeah. Um, so I dare say I'm at the same point. I mean, I did do the same thing with my mother's stuff. Yeah. Um, I, sort of, I, I took, when the time was right, I took great pleasure in taking yeah. some of her gorgeous outfits to the charity shop and that kind of thing. Um, and I could just let them go happily. Yeah, that's no, that's I was glad exactly. to get the space back. Right. But but it's that release it, feeling, isn't yeah. it? To let it go happily, right? Mm. To not feel um burdened by it, but to really, you know, thank it for its service mm. and 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 know that there's somebody else um who could enjoy it. I yeah, it's 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 an interesting time we're at because uh I don't know about you know if you know this, but in America at least, the average to clear an estate is 570 hours. Wow. Yeah. And that, you know, because people aren't taking care of all of the details. So that's one of the nice things when people, you know, work on their papers and things is that they feel, okay, I, I, you know, I have all my papers gathered up. I know my daughter knows exactly where to find all of the title to our car, the deed to our house, all of my passwords, and she's an only child and she's going to have, you yeah, know, sure. one parent yeah. at least to, to deal with. Um, and, and, you know, so I don't want to leave her with that burden. And mm. that's why so many people are coming to me looking for these solutions because they have been left with a burden and <laughs> it's a lot of time and effort. So bless you, Martin, for taking <laughs> on your friend's estate because. <laughs> yeah, I, there's uh, a lot to do. But can yeah. You- Thanks for that, Celie. Can I just take you back about three or four minutes? Sure. Because you've just said something about um, when we when we let go of things and we're talking about hoarding, and you thank it for its service, and that is so much how we deal with people with addictions on things that they want to let go of. And I'm just wondering that again, you know, do do you see sort of hoarding sometimes as a bit of an addiction? So I never specialized with people who had hoarding disorder Mm. because I have a background in set and costume design and retail management. Um, I don't have a psychological perspective. Mm. And I do believe that because uh, deep hoarding disorder really does need somebody who's a specialist. Mm. So when I was doing my organizing, um, I had a very high end DC clientele names that you would probably recognize um, if I hadn't signed a NDA and, um, and, you know, it was really beautiful homes, very pretty boxes. I was, uh, there's a organizers called the home edit. They do this pretty box type of thing. I was doing the home edit when those kids were in their diapers. Right. So, so that's (laughs) more my MO when I'm doing it, when I was doing it in people's homes. But the thanking it for the service, that's actually kind of a Marie Kondo concept. Okay. But I but we always, again, she she quoted that, but from the very beginning of organizing, so often it was just people needed to wanted me to bear witness. They, mm-hmm. you know, they'd pick something up and I'd be like, oh, uh, it's a cocktail napkin. And and she'd be like, ah. Oh, yeah, that was the first time Johnny took me to a really swanky nightclub right. in New York City. And I saved that cocktail napkin. And it was a, a magical evening and we danced all night. And you could just see, you know, this older woman just having these amazing memories of her, like, you know, vibrant life with her husband when they first met. And I'd be like, okay, do you want to save it? Oh, no, I've told you the story. We can get rid of it. Exactly. It's, it's a reminder of the things you've done and how she just important they were to you. just wanted someone to hear the story right. one mm. last time, right? And so I think that that, and I'm, I'm sure that you find this, that so much of it is asking the questions and then listening mm. and really, really listening and and bearing witness and, and saying back, that must have been an amazing evening. Right. Yeah, really and that was. is that is very, very similar to what we yeah. do, because your subconscious, all the things that are getting in the way were originally put there because they were protected. And so your subconscious is really desperately trying to keep you safe by not letting anything change because change is dangerous. And, <laughs> and 
And so as we identify those things, we do, we thank that thought for its service, but it can relax now. You've got a new thing you're going to do that will keep you safe. Yeah. Right. And so, so do you, um, is the idea is to replace kind of like we're taking away this idea that, that, that kept you safe, but doesn't serve you. And we're going to replace it with this idea. Not, I'm not on a one for one okay. uh, basis. It, um, but if you're dealing with traumatic memories mm -hmm. and whether they were from actual trauma or what, whatever they're doing to you now is traumatic. So you help through squash the importance hey, excuse me. and you, yeah. and you introduce new thoughts, but it's not like, okay, let's take care of this box room and let's put in this. No, it's not a one for one, but at, like probably like cleaning out the drawer say, Oh, that only took 10 minutes. What's going on in this cupboard? Yeah. <laughs> um, so you help that, but the same way you say, don't pull everything out of every single cupboard because you're really right. going to throw it all back in. Right. Same way yeah. we don't, when we're dealing with those things, we go very slowly, take one thing at a time, which doesn't mean you have to work with us for months and months and months, because once you get the hang of it, you do it yourself. You do it you yourself. Just, yeah. Yeah, and that, and the, again, the correlation is the same thing. Once people get the confidence to know that they can do it themselves, then, mm -hmm. then they just, you know, and, and and it just makes me laugh because, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well. Months later, they'll call you up and they're like, "Thank you so much." I'm mm -hmm. Like, I haven't been in your house in months, and you haven't <laughs> been in their heads for months, right? right. But, but you, you're perfectly happy to talk with them and say hello, yes, right? And you plant, but you planted the seeds to empower them to do what they needed to do. Mm -hmm. it, the correlation is actually kind of magical. I, I'm I Now I'm gonna to have to do a lot more <laughs> research. Um, so you, you lived in England in the 90s. I did, yes. What, what so, kind of work did you do over here then? So um, when we moved to England in 1992, it was three months after our wedding and my husband was um, getting his, uh, PhD at Cambridge University. I was allowed to work. If I had been the one getting a degree, he would not have been allowed to work, uh, but I was allowed to work. So um, one of my- was very Britain first being time, particularly sexist yeah, that time? Yes, That's exactly. a very odd. <laughs> um, so I worked at the Liberty shop. Oh, look it, I even have a visual aid, a Liberty bag. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is that an uh, example of hoarding? Or you, that's a particular, you know, you know, you know, strong memory. So I have to say, um, our our daughter's middle name is Liberty, not because I worked oh, okay. at Liberty, but because my husband is a civil libertarian, and that's what he focused on. Okay. And mm -hmm. so um, she just sent that to us because she went to the Liberty shop. So I worked at the Liberty shop, and then I worked at um, Jaeger and Viella. So I actually worked at high-end retail yeah, while I'd I say. lived in <laughs> England. And it was delightful um, because... I was able, um, the town and gown thing, right? He was a uh, gown, part of the university, but mm -hmm. I worked with normal Definitely people. I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> like uh, higher end people, but normal people. So we had this lovely experience and we lived there till 2000. We didn't, we mm -hmm. moved back in 2000. So we had this lovely experience. And I mean, the friends we made in England, once you make a friend in England, once they've decided they're gonna make friends with American, they you they are your friends for life. Our friends mm -hmm. from England are our closest friends still, um, which is why we had to make sure we bought a house with an extra bedroom because when they come over, they stay <laughs> two or three weeks at a time, which I love. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it it was a magical time in Cambridge. It so really your was. daughter, your daughter feels very British, huh? Because she well, was born there. <laughs> so she was born in Cambridge. She got her P, uh, she got her masters at Cambridge, and now she's mm -hmm. living in London, and um we actually there's actually a tree in the sydney sussex college garden with her name on it oh wow um, oh. yeah because she was the first child born in 150 years to a fellow of the college because fellows weren't allowed to marry until like the yes. 1950s right and again and we were afraid we were going to get kicked out i was trying to hide but there's <laughs> a point where you can't hide it and um the the master of the college was so gracious and they were so excited um, and they made a big fuss over her. So we, uh, they, they had a, a tree planted and it's got her name on it. So it's, we, we, we have, we have literal <laughs> roots in England. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm a big Anglophile. So I was just delighted to, you know, 
to, to be invited. And, and I'm, I'm sure that your uh, people hear from you worldwide. So mm -hmm. that is fantastic. So, so, so it's fun to look at who, where, when you do the analytics for a podcast, how many countries have listened in. Yes, it's fascinating. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when you're working with your clients, do you suggest, make suggestions and say to your subconscious, like, <clears throat> spend you talk, minutes? Like you wait, talk, you talk yeah. to the client and find out where the, where the actual pain points are. And But you also need to talk to, when you give the suggestions back, they have to be in their voice. You never suggest uh, to somebody something they don't want or that they have hasn't you haven't had an intellectual conversation about. Um, intellectual, perhaps a co cognitive conversation. Right. Um, but yes, that kind of thing. So you can you can set them a personal like, suggestion. Um, and every morning when you get up, you will the I mean, very common thing is to get ready to go to the gym because a lot of people come at the beginning of the year and say, oh, I want to get more exercise. <laughs> so you need to need things to be able to be done automatically so it, i mean sometimes the clutter is just because you don't put things back in the same place twice <laughs> so yes. it's it just that just that action of deciding where something belongs and putting it there every time without having to say oh yeah what did celia say just do it you know right um, right but without the lecture, <laughs> it's their voice. They're, I mean, obviously, they're hearing our voice on the because audience. Because that's, the, that's their intention, right? And yes, so, exactly. Yes. Yeah, um, I, and with hypnosis, because it's not just a question of, you know, waving a wand and putting somebody into hypnosis. Oh the, you know, the first half of Denise or I's sessions, it's, it's the pre-talk. And um, this is where we find out from the clients what it is that they want to do that will help their lives be better in whatever way it is they need help with so the suggestions come from them and we feed them back as denise says in their language in their words um but it, it's to alter things people do automatically without thinking so if you're the kind of person who goes to the fridge takes the milk out and always leaves the carton on the top um that's something that's relatively easy to change it's just a habit and habits you know can be mm -hmm. replaced with new habits um, but all the other stuff is also habit habit of telling yourself you're too fat, too thin, mm. too tall, too whatever. You either too much or you're not enough. Right, <laughs> so right. you put put you're just enough. <laughs> yeah, yes, or all the habit right. of telling ourselves that we're untidy when you know mm -hmm. actually we can change that if we want to. It's it's that oh I can't do anything about it. I've been like that way all my life. Yeah. I love to hear that because I see I feel so strongly. And people are like, oh, you're naturally organized. And and and, and we all have natural tendencies, right? Sure. Some of us can learn languages. Some of us are good at musical instruments. But, but we can always learn these skills. These are yes. absolutely learnable skills that everybody has access to. And, you know, some people will be gifted musicians. Some people will be doing chopsticks on the piano. But we, we can all create music just as we can yes. all get organized. We these are absolutely yeah. learnable and, and, skills. And there isn't a finite amount of organization that you need. It's not like, oh, you flunked my course because you've still got right. one drawer that is <laughs> <laughs> right. Because all of these things serve a, a, a purpose to us. We just may not be conscious of what it is. Right, right. And this is exactly like people are like, oh, you know, do you walk? And I'm like, if you come into my house, I walk the walk, right? Mm -hmm. And and but I still do every challenge that I have that my my members do and I have done for over a year now right now we're doing we're calling it the March sanity challenge and we're getting rid of 127 things over the course of the month and I'm doing it right along because I still like I have a three-bedroom house I can easily get rid of 127 things I mean I'm intrigued <laughs> Celie tell me why 127 what's so, oh, so specific it, so it's um it's based on um like the brackets of March Madness. Okay. So you get so you get rid of one thing in the first round, two things in the second round, four things in the third round, eight, and 16, 30, you may have, Do you know what March Madness is, Martin? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See, that's where the cultural reference. It's um college bas men's basketball. Oh right. Okay. Have, yeah, and they have these brackets, and so they have all these rounds. So it's kind of going backwards. They go from 
64 teams to 32, 16, but we go, we, we start, you know, get rid of one thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so the example I always, I, I just gave is, oh, we haven't even had a chance to talk about guilt because people, <laughs> people yeah, are giving so. gifts, right? And mm. then they feel like they have to hold on to them. So my husband mm -hmm. gave me a beautiful blue handbag in 2016, the year my mom died, uh, election, a whole thing. I was, it was a sad year for me. And he gave me a beautiful blue handbag and I used it. I, I loved it. I used it, but I've kind of downsized and I bought myself a different blue handbag and I was feeling kind of guilty about getting rid of this handbag. And then I thought, no, he gave it to me. I enjoyed it. Mm. Let me let it serve his purpose. It served his purpose. Like, let please, me to, to be yeah. kind to all your friends who are trying to get things under control, yes. give consumables and they don't have to be edible. Right? <laughs> give flowers, not chocolate. To most yeah, of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. No, I, that, or give experiences. That's, yes. uh, you that's know, the perfect one. Yeah. Yeah. Making memories is so much better. But so, so I do these things along with my, my students and it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, and people just are so empowered where they're like, oh, we got rid of, and they're like, oh, I've lost count. I'm like, no, no, I want to know exactly how many. Cause I think <laughs> you know, together we're going to get rid of like, Brosses oh, yeah. of things, right? So it's um, it, it it is about yeah, the guilt about holding on to gifts. If you can subliminally tell all of your clients that just because somebody gave them a gift, they don't have to hold on to it. This is the biggest gift I think we could give our the next so generation. That, that is true of everything. If somebody gave you an insult, you don't have to accept it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, Can you yes. believe it? Can you believe it? We are well We're over time. time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank I, you I, so I won't know much. where to begin editing this one. I don't want to cut anything out. <laughs> well, let's, let's, we, we'll just give people an extra long one. Last yeah. last one was pretty short, short or packet. <laughs> when we did the one on, on self care, yeah. that was a particularly short episode for us. <laughs> um, but so we'll say goodbye to our, our guests, our, not our guests, but to. Thank yeah, well, Celie, bef before you go, will you please tell people how they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. Um, they can find me at celiecawley.com, C-L-E-E-C-A-W-L-E-Y.com. Um, I would be delighted to help anybody with any organizing things they need. I also have a Facebook group. They're welcome to join a free Facebook group where we do some of these challenges and I help people with organizing things in there. And I have people from all over the world. So I'd be delighted for any of your listeners to join in. And I thank you both so much. This was oh, absolutely wow. fascinating. <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you so much Terrific. for coming on. Let's have thank you back you. on soon. Thank you. <laughs>